So, yeah. All right, Queen Sugar. We were waiting for this episode for, what, two weeks now. So, this is my recap for episode eight from season one. Uh, what is it called? Where We All? Where With All? Now, the episode starts off with Aunt Vi. She's bunking out because, you know, Nova is doing, trying to be Captain Sava. Her whole mission in life is to help everyone else out. And so, she doesn't really focus on her. Aunt Vi's freaking out because she's remembering what happened last time when Nova was trying to help everyone and how it almost got her killed. So she's like, you need to get your butt home fast because this storm's approaching and it's getting worse quickly. Um, we noticed that Micah is dressed, uh, you know, he's dressed up and it's because he's supposed to have his little interview. Well, go to his orientation to this new preppy school and he's going to this private school because you know, his mom's like, you know, he needs to go into Harvard, you know, the Ivy Leagues, Harvard, Stanford, Dartmouth, you know, one of those. And, <laughs> and on, he's like, oh, uh, well, what's wrong with the other ones? What's wrong with the other ones? You can still get a good education. Like, what's the issue? What's going on? But, um, you know, <laughs> Charlie has this whole thing of, um, has this whole mentality of, well, what? she expects of him and what she thinks is good for him and all of that being said we're still wondering what's going on with Hollywood what where's Hollywood what's gonna happen to him and she's like oh no don't worry about someone like him he has his own family to care about not ours <laughs> like oh gosh here we go come on on V don't be like that you know you still love you some Hollywood but you did lie on you and do some foolishness uh, along with that uh, we actually see what Nova's doing again. She's helping out. Remember the old lady she originally uh, kind of prescribed medication to, including weed? Yeah, she's helping her out and, you know, they're not looking for her granddaughter, but the older woman's concerned for her granddaughter because her granddaughter is, I guess she's... I don't know if she's a Rolling Stone or what, but we just know that she's somewhere not where she needs to be. And until she finally gets back with her uh, grandma, she's going to worry. Just like how Aunt V feels about... <laughs> exactly like how Aunt V feels uh, when it comes to Nova. And Nova's with her little girlfriend as well, doing these errands for these older people. Remy comes over and, of course, uh, Remy's there. He's trying to border up the house, the farmhouse. To prepare for the storm. He already fixed over his house. Hollywood's there to help as well. Uh, Char and then with Charlie, Charlie, you know, they're all there because the farm needs to be taken care of. The crop needs to be grown. Well, no, not grown, but picked all of the uh, sugar cane. And Charlie, instead of telling the men that, yes, you can leave, you can leave, you can go, uh, she's like, oh, uh, no, no, they can stay. They still have one more hour. What are you doing? Remy's saying, uh, hello, these people have to go off and, you know, they're Hispanic. The only reason why that's important, because, I don't know, I feel like if they weren't, Charlie would have, um, and they were a little bit more vocal, Charlie probably would have been like, alright, you guys can go, but because they're like, Charlie had their money, they were supposed to get paid, Charlie was basically holding up their, um, p possibility of them getting paid. And so, of course, she was like, you know, just one more hour, one more hour, then you guys can go, vomino, somno. So I'm like, who are you talking to? These are people. These are people, Charlie. These are people. Remy's over it because he's like, again, you're not listening to me. And watch what's going to happen with you not listening to me. They're going to get stuck here. They're going to get stranded here. It's going to be your fault. And then what are you going to do? You're going to stay here and uh, fend for them? Is that what you're going to do? Is that what you're going to do? And... While Nova's driving, she keeps getting a call from on Fi, she, and then she also gets a call from Calvin, you know, that's her ex-boyfriend who, you know, was married, so she ignores that one as well, and they finally get to the nursing home for the nursing home, the shelter, what have you, for the older woman that uh, she's been driving around, and it's just like, God bless you, so she finally gives on Fi a call, and on Fi's like, girl, you gonna have me have a heart attack. Remember, I don't think I forgot what happened when you were on that roof helping those people out and we almost lost you that one year. 
you're not doing that to us again. You hear me? She's like, yes, ma'am. No, no. Do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. All right. Get get here soon. I'm not playing with you because the storm keeps getting uh, upgraded. So I don't have time for this. Lord. Guess. So while uh, Ralph Angel's trying to board up the house, guess who comes over? G g no. Darla. Darla, yes. His baby mama comes over, and she has a birthday gift. I'm thinking, uh, you're a little late for that? She's like, yeah, I came over to give Blue his birthday gift. She's like, well, that was last month. You really couldn't remember that? No, I remember. It's just I didn't have the money to do so, so I'm giving it to him now. And so he's like, you can't just come in his life whenever you want to. Blue sees his mom's like, mommy. So there goes that mentality. And of course, she goes in the house with Blue. Hollywood's just looking at this like, oh, Lord Jesus, Ralph Angel, we don't have time for this. We have to go and work. And it's interesting because Hollywood didn't give the look off like he's judging her or anything. He just gave the look off, look, we don't have time for this. There are more important pressing matters to attend to. And... Uh, Remy is talking again, trying to talk some sense into, um, Charlie, because Remy's just like, you know, Charlie's just like, don't you need to get home? He said, no, I actually prepared. That's why I'm here to help you. I'm here to be a guardian angel. That's not what he said, but that's basically what he meant. And while that's going on, uh, Charlie, you know, she's trying to help out. So she takes off her wedding band, her wedding ring, and that's a really important step for her because she hasn't, uh, done that in the while and she puts it in the coat pocket uh Ralph Angel's like look Darla you're already here we can't leave you in this house so why don't you come and just follow us leave your car here come and follow us we'll all go to Aunt V's she knows that Aunt V doesn't like her so that's why she was like oh you know what I'll be okay I'm good I'm thinking <laughs> that's what you think back at Aunt V um Aunt V is pissed pissed at uh, Nova because Nova again is dodging the calls. She's like, you need to get your butt here before you get blown away. She tells Micah to go and get some stuff out of the shed uh, to, of course, uh, decrease the temperature in the refrigerator and uh, pump up the power so that if the power goes out, then at least none of their stuff will go bad. She sees, <laughs> she sees Hollywood boarding up her windows and she's over it because she's looking at him like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Really? 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 No, 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 no. No, you need to go. Why don't you go and fend uh, for your wife? She's like, look, she's being taken care of. Don't worry about her. I'm here to help you out. And of course, Ralph Angel comes and uh, <laughs> on Jesus is like, oh, is that my blue? Is that my blue? Oh, who is this heifer? <laughs> Blue's mother, Darla. She was disgusted. She told, oh, as soon as Darla went into the other room with Blue, she told Ralph Angel, you need to get that woman out of my house. I'm already dealing with Hollywood. I cannot deal with someone else that I don't want to see right now. I can't do that right now. Remy uh, comes over to the house and Hollywood goes, uh, comes back in and goes back out because he needs to do a couple of more things. He needs to pick up a couple more things. And this is where we see a pivotal moment again where Charlie puts back on her ring. I'm thinking, Charlie, please take the ring off. Please take the ring off. And thankfully, she takes it right off, puts it on the dresser, and keeps it pushed. I'm thinking, huh, you said you can't trust Nova, so how can you trust her to make sure that she doesn't pill for your ring? I'm just saying. I'm being a little petty right now. I'm just saying. And while she's talking to uh, Micah, uh, of course... Uh, on, on Vi's concern and that makes Charlie upset and so once Nova comes in Charlie's just like excuse me excuse me uh you couldn't call anyone on V was uh very concerned for you and you can give her a call hello what's wrong with you hello como se dice K or S do you know what time it is and she was just saying you know what I'm good my house is boarded up we're good on Vi, I'm sorry. Charlie, don't worry about it. Micah comes in. This is like, oh, hey, my... Oh, hell no. Darla. Hey, Darla. Hey, Micah. <laughs> That's really so shady. And, of course, Hollywood's back. And Hollywood got some alcohol and some cards. So, you know, they're going to have themselves a good time. Now, 
Uh, Nova is talking to Micah about the school and how the orientation go. Oh, orientation got canceled. Oh, well, I'm sure you're going to rock it. I'm sure it'll be a good time. And you have that number. Well, I mean, how does... How do you know about all of that? Well, Micah actually goes and tells me these things. You know, we have that type of relationship where he goes and he tells me uh, these things through text message. And Nova's over it because, I mean, and Charlie's over it because Charlie, Nova was actually saying, you know, maybe I can actually go and uh, listen to you. Um, I can, you can come and stay with me. I live down, uh, what was it, in the French Quarter or a certain part. And um, we can, you can go and stay with me during the week instead of commuting back and forth here. You know, it's just a lot easier. And Charlie does not like the idea because she's like, no, I don't think you're able to handle a teenager. I don't think that's a good idea for him, the environment. And I'm thinking, Charlie, you're treading on light. You're treading, you're treading. You know, that conversation can go either way. It can absolutely go either way. So, you know, we get past all of that, and they're playing spades. <laughs> Mike is keeping store, score even though he wanted to play himself. Darla's in the other room teaching Blue, I mean, uh, giving Blue bedtime stories, and Blue wants another one. So she gives a story about, you know, these friends. These friends, when they were growing up, uh, they uh, knew each other. They are very different. One person had... Uh, more things than the other person. Of course, this is about her and Ralph Angel. And uh, the thing was that one had a good father, the other one didn't have a good father. Um, I like how R Ralph Angel is to you. And one day we uh, had this toy together and she did something to lose the toy. And so he took over responsibility for the toy and he gave the toy a lot of love and cherished the toy. And so she felt really bad about it. She came back and wanted to also share the toy, but well, wanted the toy for herself. But what she needed to realize was the toy wasn't just hers alone. It was also theirs to share. So she, uh, uh, Blue was like, oh, so did they ever, you know, share a toy together again? It's like, she was like, yeah. He allowed her to do so, and she really appreciated it. And, of course, Ralph Angel's getting soft up into this sob story. I'm thinking, wow, she is manipulating the hell out of this. But I'm like, no, no, let's just pretend she doesn't know that he's there, because she probably doesn't, so let me stop. While everyone's having a good time around the table, uh, the dynamics of the two of the sisters blow up, because <sighs> here comes the truth. On V's trying to, you know, de-escalate the situation, but the sisters need to vent. They need to vent, and Charlie's over it, because Charlie's like, here is the reason why I don't want you around Micah, because Nova's trying to figure out what is the real reason. It's because of her sexuality, is it this, is it that? She said, no, because of where you live and because of all the violence and stuff that's been going on, where you live, forget the flooding, I don't care about that. The fact that you live in a house where you're selling wheat and you're not a mother. You're not a mother, regardless of uh, what you're trying to do to help everyone. You're not a mother. You're also, you're not a mother. You sell weed. You don't live in a truly safe neighborhood, regardless of the fact that you want to rebuild and all that and you respect the neighborhood. You also need to respect the fact that we are in a time where uh, you slept with a married man. You slept with a married man. So I really don't know where your morals are. And, you know, at first I was thinking, Charlie... You're really saying all oh, this is messed up, but then I had to think about it and realize, you know what? Everything that Charlie's been through, that's her main issue. It's like, how can I really trust you with my son when you do certain things, regardless of the fact that she smokes the same uh, weed that you grow and all of that, if at the end of the day, certain things that I'm really for, you're borderline against or don't care about, and he's already growing up in a household with someone that exhibited some of the same behavior. So I did understand, even though I felt like, dang, she's going really left with it. Oh yeah, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already done so. She's going really left with it. I had to really step back and think, she's not wrong. She's not wrong for certain things. So <laughs> Nova was shook. Nova felt bad because she knew on certain points Charlie was right. Ralph Angel, you know, he's talking to Blue, and Blue's concerned because, you know, the thunder is scaring him. So he gets in the bed with um, 
Darla and Blue. <sighs> Aunt V goes over to Nova and says, so did you know that that man was married? Your boyfriend's married? She's like, yeah. And it's just like, okay, honey. Okay. Now, you know your little sister felt a certain way because of everything that's been going on with her life. That's what it really is. You understand that? It's like, yeah. And so this is where we confirmed the fact that, one, that Nova is the oldest, because Ralph Angel's the youngest, so Charlie is the middle sister, so she definitely gives off middle child syndrome. Um, and along with that, uh, she was like, and you saw what your mother had to go through with your father and the adultery, regardless of how good of a man your father was, the adultery played a huge key, even with Charlie's mom as well. So if Nova's the oldest, that means that uh, Nova, you know, her father, their father had sex with Nova's mom first, and then with Charlie's mom. So was Charlie's mom the other woman, or and she didn't know it, or did she, or were they really broken up? What's going on? Because then she had sex again with her to have Ralph Angel. It's like wow, that dad. Mm -mm. Yeah, Hollywood is trying to talk to on Vi and just say, you know. I did what I did, and I know it was messed up. Uh, you don't worry about it because my because the thing is, my wife, she got pregnant when we were together, and I did by, right by her, so I got married to her. But then she um, she lost a baby, and so then she also started to develop those mental health issues around the same time, and she needed the insurance. That's the truth of the matter. If I was saying she didn't have family, look, her family's trash. Her family's trash. They really weren't going to have her back, so that's why I had to step in. Was it right for me to lie to you? No. But would I do it over again? Um, no. I love you. I love you. I love this family. But I did what I thought was right. I'm sorry that I did uh, lie to you. You didn't deserve any of that. Um, she was like, well, you know, all you men just seem to be the same. I was like, first of all, don't you ever compare me to your ex. Your ex put, your, put his hands on you. That wasn't a man. That was not a man. You know, I am wrong. I admit that I'm wrong. But don't you ever compare me to someone like that. She was like, no, you never put your hands on me. And I was never concerned about that. But you did hurt me. You hurt me in a different way. I was like, oh, Lord, here we go. You hurt me. Ooh, come on, come on. Get the tears, get the tears. Oh, oh, at the cusp, at the cusp. All right, but she didn't cry. Now, while that's going on, you know, Ralph Angel, he's just telling Darla, look, honey, you know, you can stay here because you really have nowhere else to go. I know you don't have anywhere else to really go right now with the storm and the weather. On V's telling Ralph Angel, because she was like, Ralph Angel, come out here. It's like, shh, blue sleep. And it's like, I don't care. She needs to go. She needs to go. She can't stay here. I know what she's trying to do. Uh, you need to see it too. And this is where Darla gained some points with all of us because Darla let it be known, look, I understand. Here's what I first have to do. I am sorry on Vi. I'm sorry, Vi. I'm sorry, Hollywood. And I want to thank both of you. One, because you stepped in and saved my baby. If it wasn't for you, Aunt Vi, I know that he would be in the system. I know that I would never see him again. So thank you. And I never got a chance to thank you. Thank you, Hollywood, because you came to that hotel room where that man, when Hollywood found Darla as this in, in that hotel room high out of her mind with Blue basically under her while a man was on top of her, she said, you didn't judge me, you will, you kicked the guy out, and then you did not judge me, you did not um, curse me, you just took my son and you said, you know, God bless you girl, because you knew I needed it. And I appreciate that so much. You don't know that you saved his life and my life that day. So I thank both of you. I know that I brought, you know, seeds of discord into this family. And it was my fault. There's no one else to blame really but me. But from this day forward, I've been clean for 18 months. And I understand that that's not 18 years. But I will work hard every day to prove to both of you that I uh, can be and will be a strong woman for my son. That's all I can do uh, going forward. And I just need you to, to allow me to do so. And I was like, damn, damn.
Damn! It was emotional. And of course, Aunt V is just like... You know, she's still over it, but... The fact that... Because I feel like no one really does that in that family. Actually apologize for the things that they do. So the fact that here's this woman who I despise for what she did to my nephew. And, um... My nephew. And it was just... Jesus. Jesus. Alright. We just take it from there. You know. Hollywood accepted it because Hollywood understands someone messes up. So that's why he doesn't judge. So everyone's asleep. Everyone's asleep actually except for uh, the one and the only Charlie. Charlie takes her rings and she puts in a sock. She puts in the drawer. I'm thinking, Lord, this, the rings are going to go missing. Someone's going and going to pilfer the drawer for some socks. The rings are going to go missing. But no, you know, this is a big step for Charlie because this is Charlie's way of saying, all right, I'm done with the past. I need to move forward. So she goes and wakes up um, Remy. Well, Remy's not really, really asleep. And Remy makes some room for her. And they, they start to make out. I was like, Move the camera so I can see it more. <laughs> but anyway, that's it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think. Come back next week.